So if we're here in the morning, we began to unravel the various gods that one who is on the narrow way will have to disregard if they will finish their journey with the Lord. And I said to you in the morning that what Satan wants to do is that he wants to lead you away from God. He wants to lead you away from God. He knows that if he can successfully lead you away from God, he can guarantee that you will not finish your journey. Satan doesn't want you to finish. The earlier you realize that, the better for you. There is no good thing that Satan wants for you. Even what it looks like that is good that Satan might be offering you, uh, the bottom line of him offering it to you is because he does not want you to finish. I know I said we're going to take questions, but I'm looking at the time, and hmm, let's see how it goes. If I can finish on time, we'll take some questions. So Satan doesn't want you to finish. So anything that can become a stumbling block on your journey, anything that can, he can orchestrate, he can release, he can magnify, that he knows will successfully derail you on the narrow way, he will do. He wants to lead you away from God. But if in his leading you away from God, he makes his objective very, very easy to identify, then his objective would have failed even before it started. So what he does is that he subtly, deceptively raises other gods on your pathway that you will be willing to offer worship to which in the long run will mean that your heart will be turned away from the Lord. Because the, the, the Christian, like I said to us in the morning, the Christian is made by God for God. You were created for God. That's what the Christian is. Created for God. You were created to contact God. You were created to contain God. You were created to express God. You were created for God. There's nothing else in this visible realm that man was created for. So by design, man cannot find satisfaction in anything or any person that is not God. No matter how good it is, no matter how comfortable it is, no matter how attractive it is, by design, there is a hole, an emptiness in your soul and spirit that only God can feel. Satan knows this, but he creates these obsessions in the visible realm to give you a false sense of satisfaction. A false sense. So, mortals are in a rat race trying to acquire more goods, acquire more possessions eat more food, wear better clothes. The cycle is endless, hoping that the more they get, the more they acquire, the more they possess, they'll be able to find fulfillment and satisfaction. I teach, there's a course I teach um, called entrepreneurship. I used to teach, I've handed over that course. And one of the modules in that course is called motivation. And in that motivation theory, I need to review with my students various motivation theories that have been postulated by psychologists, for, by human relations experts. And there is one that is very popular. It's called the Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. Have you heard of that theory before? Postulated by a guy called Abraham Maslow. And what Maslow does is that he has a triangle and he says that for any man to reach satisfaction and fulfillment, these needs must be met in his life. And he says that 
depending on where you are on the ladder of life, your satisfaction will be based on the needs you have at that point. So you have basic needs, shelter, clothing, and all of that. That at the, if you are at the bottom of life, there is a point you are in life where having those needs met will give you a sense of satisfaction. But at the top of that triangle is what is called self-realization. He said that mortals, humans, will never truly know fulfillment until they get to where it's called self-realization. Somebody can only be satisfied for a while with their basic needs. For a while. But after a while, they will now find out that those basic needs are not actually enough to give them fulfillment and satisfaction. They will begin to feel like there is something lacking, there is something missing. That the person will continue to climb. There's what is called self-esteem needs, there's security needs. They will continue to climb. That when the person gets to where it's called self-realization, that is the only point that the human being will find fulfillment and satisfaction. And self-realization, true self-realization is not possible outside of a relationship with God. So what happens in the world is, even when people get to the peak of their career, even when they, they get to the point where they have reached the peak of their abilities, they come to a point where they still find out that something is missing. Don't believe me, oh, don't believe me. Just read. Some of the greatest artists you know that the world celebrated, eh? they get to go to the peak of life and they died with emptiness, naughtiness, with depression. They actually reached self-realization. They were the best at what they do. They were the king of this and the queen of that, and the master of this and the master of that. But when you listen to them talk on their deathbed, they found out that self-realization was not enough. You know why? Self-realization in yourself will always leave you lacking. Self-realization in God will bring satisfaction and fulfillment. You will only truly know yourself and know peace when you begin to look at yourself through the eyes of God. So the, Christ, the mortal, not even the Christian, the mortal is designed with the inability to find satisfaction and fulfillment outside of God. Are you with me? So, what the devil does is that he creates diversions, alternatives, substitutes, in the hope that if he can derail your attention, you can pursue the wrong things and miss your way on the narrow path. And we said in the morning, that even though there are many diversions that the devil can raise, there are three prominent ones that have somehow snuck into the church. And it is those three prominent ones we are tempted to look at in the morning and we are only able to touch one. And the first alternate God that Satan raises is the God of materialism and money. The God of materialism and money. And if you listen to me carefully in the morning, you would have identified that basically there are two dangers, two dangers of materialism to the believer. The first danger is if you become materialistic, materialism has the ability to turn your heart away from God. Because since you were created for God, you are expected to be obsessed with God. What materialism will do to your soul is that you will become obsessed with material things. You will be living to pursue material things. You will be living to acquire material things. And I showed you in the morning, there's nothing wrong with being rich. Riches are not evil. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 6, 
and verse 17 that the Lord gives us all things richly to what? To enjoy. There's nothing wrong with being rich. If it is part of God's will for you to be rich and you become rich, you're not going to go to hellfire. But the possibility of you going to hellfire exists because it is possible for the riches to turn your heart away from God. Where you begin to trust in the riches instead of putting your trust in God. It is possible for the riches to make you covetous. Where you continue to use the money to amass more, amass more, amass more, you are storing your treasures where? In the earth. Instead of storing your treasures in the heavens. Just as riches have their downside, I said to us in the morning, that poverty also has a challenge. The poverty, the challenge with poverty is your trust. That's right. Your trust in God. The struggle in the mind of the person that their basic needs are not met is their struggle in confirming God's ability to meet their basic needs. They don't trust God enough that he will do what he says he will do. I was trying to remember where that scripture is. I can't remember it off the top of my head. But he says, don't make me rich so that I... Huh? What does that scripture say? Yes, don't make me too rich so that I will not curse you. Don't make me too poor so that I will not beg. But let's find it. Let's find it. I know it's in Proverbs. Where? Is it 18? 30 verse. Is it 1? Let's find it. It's in the Bible. 9. Lest I be fool and deny you, Lord, and say... Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and profane the name of my God. So go to verse 8. Verse 8. Remove falsehood and lies from far from where? Give me neither. Feed me with the food word. This is a wise man. This is not um, a joker. <laughs> I've taught you before that you don't take the things Solomon says for granted because he's a wise man. This was a man who, by the grace of God, operated in a level of wisdom that was given to him by God. And he said, remove falsehood and lies from me. The reason there's a semicolon there is that you can become false and a liar because of either having poverty or riches. Yes. So he says, give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food. What? What does that mean? If it is your will, oh, that this is how I should be, give me your will. That's what Solomon is saying. If the food allotted to me is the food of my ability to eat my three square meals, and that's how I live till I die. Give me the food allotted to me. If what is allotted to me is that I'm going to live in affluence and in luxury and in opulence, give me the food allotted to me. My definition of poverty or riches no longer matters when it is put side by side with the will of God. Are you with me? He prays this prayer because if you are the one pursuing riches by yourself, what will happen is you will get to a point where you will think that it is your labor, your hard work. You know, you are, you are so wise, you are so, you are so gifted, so you have become rich. You have everything now. So you will now be able to say, who is the Lord? Are you here? So it is what you have ordained, my portion that has been written for me in heaven. Give me what is allotted to me. So when I say things like, for the Christian, it's not riches or poverty that is the matter. It is, am I in the center of the will of God? 
That should be the concern for the believer. And like I said in the morning, this subtle conception that in, exists in the body of Christ, where it looks like a rich Christian is more valuable to the kingdom than a poor one, is a lie from the pit of hell. 